Day in the Life of the Thyroid Hormone, Synthesis and Regulation by Helena Falcone. The structure of a thyroid follicle is similar to a gel capsule of medicine. The outside capsule is the simple cuboidal epithelium. The inside would be the colloid, which is the capsule's viscous contents. And then down here we have a capsule of medicine as an example. The thyroid gland curves across the anterior surface of the trachea, just inferior to the thyroid cartilage. The thyroid gland contains large numbers of thyroid follicles, which are hollow spheres lined by simple cuboidal epithelium. Down here we have the hollow spheres lined with simple cuboidal epithelium. The follicle cells surround a follicle cavity that is home to a vis very viscous colloid, which is better known as a fluid that holds very large quantities of dissolved proteins. A hard-working network of capillaries are what surround each of the follicles and they deliver nutrients or food and hormones to the cells that accept their products and waste. So here we have a cell as the home, hormones as the purple, food as the green, and they're all going back to the cell. The follicle cells will then go on to synthesize a protein that is called thyroglobulin which will then be secreted into the colloid of the follicles of the thyroid. So thyroglobulin is secreted and the colloid of the follicles of the thyroid it goes to. The thyroid globulin molecules contain the amino acid that is called tyrosine, which is considered the building blocks of the thyroid hormone. So here I have examples of building blocks, which all come up to tyrosine. So the forming of the thyroid hormone consists basically of seven steps. So the first step is the iodine ions are absorbed through a person's diet from the digestive tract and then brings it to the thyroid gland. After this happens, the TSH, sensitive carrier proteins, then bring iodine ions into the cytoplasm. In step two, the, on the apical surface of each follicle cell, the iodide ions diffuse and are then converted to an activated form of iodide. So here we have the original iodine ion. They diffuse and then convert it to activated form of iodide. Step three is tyrosine linked with iodine ions become linked by covalent bonds. The hormone thyroxine or T4 contains four iodine ions. The hormone triiodothyronine, or T3, contains three iodine ions. Once this process has completed, each molecule of thyroglobulin contains four to eight molecules of both T3 or T4. So here I have an example of the thyroid gland and the thyroid follicles. So these bigger things are right here are the thyroid follicles. And then this with all the little dots around it and the bigger in the middle is the thyroid gland. Step four, the follicle cells remove thyroglobulin from the follicles by endocytosis. Step five, lysosomal enzymes break down the thyroglobulin and they all enter the cytoplasm. After this, all of the amino acids and enzymes are used once again to make more thyroglobulin. In step six, T3 and T4 are all diffused across the basement membrane and are then released into the bloodstream. Step seven, or the last step, approximately 70% of both T3 and T4 that are entering the bloodstream become attached to the transport proteins that are called thyroid binding globulins, or better known as TBGs. So the drawing on this next page, I'm gonna explain to you by showing instead of the words. So here we start um, with the hypothalamus releasing TRH at the anterior lobe, which is the pituitary gland. After this happens, it goes down to the anterior lobe, releasing TSH into the thyroid gland. 
So through this, homeostasis is restored, which increases T3 and T4 concentrations inside the blood. After this, homeostasis is reached, so normal T3 and T4 and normal body temperature. After this, the homeostasis then becomes disturbed, so lower T3 and T4 in the blood or lower body temperature, which then will bring it back to the anterior lobe. And that's the end. Thank you for watching.